Hello everyone and welcome back. And if you're new to the channel, welcome to you too. Today I have the kel PMR-30. It is a gun that I have absolutely no use for, but I love it. I mean, it feels great in the hand, it weighs next to nothing, and it, best of all, it holds 30 rounds of 22 Magnum. And if you're not sure what 22 Magnum is, here it is. It's basically a hopped up 22 long rifle. The brass casing is probably about the same length or a little longer than your standard overall length of a 22 long rifle. But 30 rounds of this is amazing. Um, I've been i been seeing these guns for a long time now, uh, since early or late last year, 2010, and I've been wanting to get one. I've seen them for around $300 from CDNN Investments, but I never ordered one because I wanted to hold it first and check it out see if I actually liked it. Um, this is kind of like the poor man's FN57. The FN57 is around a thousand or more dollars and this is 300 bucks. You can probably get three of these for the cost of one of those. So the poor man's 57, here it is. It's, uh, I think Keltec kind of markets it towards a little bit of self-defense, a use of that in that area, but Personally, I wouldn't use rimfire for self-defense due to the misfires that could happen. And I've had misfires with 22 Magnum and revolver pistols in the past. So I, I'd think twice if you're going to use it for self-defense just for that reason. Other than that, I experienced no failures at all with this gun. And I used two different types of ammo, CCI and Winchester. And it, it ran flawless for me. Hit the mark every time. The recoil was very manageable for such a light gun. This thing weighs under a pound. And uh, the sights, let's take a look at the sights on it. It came with uh, fiber optic sights rear and front. Real nice long sight radius for this gun, which helps with accuracy. There's a tactical rail on the bottom. Um, ambidexter safeties on both sides. The trigger pull is real nice. Let's take a let's let's put a snap cap in there and try it out and pull the empty 30 out. I mean, this right here just says I got to have one. 30 rounds in a pan gun is just fantastic. That fits flush. So I'll put one of my snap caps in there. I measured it earlier. It breaks about three pounds, but check this trigger out. A little bit of movement there, and then it goes off. I mean, there's no creep. There's no well. It's a little spongy at first, but it breaks very clean. I don't feel any kind of roughness in the trigger at all. I'm very happy with the trigger on this gun. But uh, <clears throat> the, the barrel, the action rather, is a combination blowback and breech lock, I believe they call it. And I I'm, I'm suppose that's supposed to give you a better, uh, better result shooting a wider variety of ammunition. And uh, they, it probably can't be done, but I think this gun would be really cool in a uh, 17 caliber HMR or even a 17 Mach 2. Uh, why? I, I think it's a cool round, super fast. And besides, I have no use for the 22 Magnum anyway, and so why not no use for something else <laughs> like in a 17 caliber? But if you notice here on the frame, there's screws all through it. And on the other side, you can see the, the nuts on the other side of the screws. That's because the frame ha appears to be a two-piece mold. You can see the seam down the middle. It goes all the way down the middle. And for a $300 gun, I suspect this is probably part of the reason they're, they're manufacturing it so cheaply. In other words, the, the frame is not a full piece, and therefore they don't have to have extra moldings or extra steps in the manufacturing process. And... Uh, Teardown or disassembly of this gun is pretty simple. No tools are needed unless you're me. But there's basically a, a retainer pin right here, for lack of better words. You just push it through on the right hand side. You can kind of see it move out over here. And then if your fingernails are strong enough, you just kind of pull that out, set that aside, and then the slide comes right off the end. And then you got this plastic frame. I tell you, this, this thing weighs nothing. We're talking amazing, amazing weight. On the slide portion, it's all metal with the exception of this top, pop, top part right here, which is held, it's plastic, and it's held in by four screws that screw directly into the, um, 
the, the, the metal slide portion underneath. I suspect there will be some aftermarket parts right here where you can undo these four screws, take this rear side off, and maybe put on a, um, a scope mount or something. But this top part right here with these serrations gives you a nice purchase when you're trying to rack the slide, something to grab a hold of. The uh, recoil spring is a dual spring system and to take it apart here we'll pull on this part right here with a finger. I'm not that strong so I'm going to get, there it comes, I'm going to use my tweezers here to help get a little bit of assistance, there we go. So I'm going to pry that right out. And so here's your recoil uh, spring and there is a little plastic buffer right here at the end. This does have polarity, if you will. It only fits in one in one direction. I can see this part wearing out over time. So if I was to actually purchase one, I would probably buy a couple of these because I, I could, like I said, I could see that going da getting damaged over time. This is not my gun. It was it's on loan to me from tac uh, Tactical Gun Review, and I got to get it back to him soon. So I cleaned it up last night. But uh, okay, so now that we got our Recoil spring out and our buffer. Now we can take the barrel and the and the barrel barrel block out. So we pull this forward all the way, and then lift the barrel block out, and then our barrel comes right out. I love this. It's a fluted barrel. I mean that probably adds to the to the weight loss as well. I mean this is kind of slick, and to see I mean this is that is tiny. It just cracks me up. So, but anyways, here's the inside of the slide. You can see where those four screws meet in from the top part. And uh, just, I mean, the machining works, looks very nice. And I, I, there's, there's a few hundred rounds through this. And from what I'm told by Tactical Gun Review, they've experienced no issues at all as far as functionality goes. So to put it back together, we'll take our barrel block, pull the barrel all the way forward, put the barrel block on top, slide it all the way back, take our buffer, and remember that it does have some polarity to it. There it goes. And then we'll take our recoil guide rod, slip that right there, push that forward a little bit and snaps it in place. And there it is. Now for our bottom portion of the, the frame, to put it on, we just slide it on the, over the front. I like to put a little pressure on the back here to make sure it catches these rails back here. So I'm going to hold it like that and squeeze it in the nose, pull all the way back, and then just kind of rack the slide because this is about as far as it goes until you rack the slide. So now we're, we're back to, together. Don't forget our little pin, push that through. Everything's put back together again. So the only couple of issues I see on this gun are the tactical rail and the, with this trigger guard. And the reason I mention that is if you take like a flashlight, this is a cheesy little flashlight, probably about $30 or so. Um, this, this trigger guard right here, how it protrudes up front, kind of inhibits how far back you can mount a, a rail or a, a, an accessory. I, w I would like to mount this just a little bit further, maybe right there, but you can see that the trigger guard is in the way. So in other words, I have to mount it up a little bit further forward without screwing this on all the way. There we go. Get it kind of finger tight. You, you need to have some very long fingers in order to actuate this. And I, I happen to have long fingers, so it's, it's all right for me. But if you had short fingers, keep that into consideration if you're going to put an accessory on this. Um, I have a laser as well. This one here, since it's a lower profile, it doesn't bump into that. You can actually mount this all the way back up against the trigger guard right in here. So this one here gives you a lot more room for error as far as reaching and turning it on. Um, another thing about this, as far as concern for me, is the frame here. If you look along this line, it seems to take a, a little bit of a turn, a little nosedive, almost warped. So if I zoom in a little closer here, you can see a large gap here at the front. And that's because the frame appears to be a little bit bent. And it's just the way the plastic molding, I guess, is done. There's nothing down here in the front that keeps the barrel and slide in place. 
So I guess that's just a, a just a manufacturing defect or or quality oversight. I guess I'm not sure. It doesn't do anything for, as far as function goes, but it just it doesn't look as great. One of the things I was questioning whether or not to buy this gun or not, and I wanted to hold it, feel it, touch it, and uh, it was the grip. The grip looks really big and fat. Kind of reminded me of a uh, a 50 caliber Desert Eagle. If you ever held a 50 caliber Desert Eagle, the magazines feel like a rifle mag, and they just feel kind of big and bulky in your hand, and it, it just doesn't seem like much to grab a hold of. It's too much to grab a hold of, basically, and I was afraid that this would be the same issue with this gun. But the way it's molded, it's got this, I don't know how to describe it, but it's not an oval like the STI guns or the uh, 1911s that I'm used to. It's fat in the back and narrow in the front, which it just feels pretty darn good in my hands for some reason. And so I was really surprised about this. So I may just have to get me one of these eventually, but I need to give this one back to tactical gun review first <laughs> otherwise they're gonna they're gonna come after me well thanks for watching and please subscribe for more competition shooting and gun reviews thanks Caltech PMR 30 at a hundred yards at the gong target the steel target on the right Woo, touchy trigger